Michelle here. Michelle, the health coach. I'm going to do a little, another fermentation demo today. So hopefully some of you guys will um, jump on. I didn't do a warning message on Facebook, so I'm not sure who's sitting around staring at their phone at, uh, what time is it? At noon. It's lunchtime. You guys should be staring at your phone eating lunch. Um, anyway, let me know if the sound is good. Last time I did one, I had a little bit of trouble with the sound and I had to redo it, restart it. But, um, so I'm going to wait a few minutes and hopefully somebody will jump on and let me know how the sound is. I hope everybody had a great weekend. I'm kind of winging this. I have a daikon radish that needs to be done, something needs to be done with it. So that's where I'm getting the inspiration for this. But um, I'm hoping people are jumping on. Unfortunately, I can't see. Oh, we've got three people. Okay, so if my sound is good, let me know and we'll get started. So I'm Michelle Sala, I'm a health coach. I educate people on what to eat to get healthier. And one of the things that I love to make is fermented vegetables. When I lived in California, I would teach classes and um, they were very popular. And it's super easy to make and it's great to do when you have excess vegetables from your garden. Um, or if you need to clean out your refrigerator, if you've got scraps of stuff, it's actually a great way to utilize vegetables. So I went to the Korean market on Saturday because I made a little, had a little Korean dinner party and I picked up, it's a Korean daikon radish. So I thought it would be fun to ferment this because it has a much milder flavor than um, like red radishes. It has, a, I think, a little bit more flavor than the Japanese daikon that kind of looks like a shape of a big carrot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, oh, I've already washed it and I'm going to take the peel off because it'll be kind of tough if I leave it on and okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to cut off the hairy end. Let's taste it. So, Michael said it has a mild flavor, but a little bit more, a little bit more of a bite than like a Japanese daikon. And so, it's going to end up, if I just use this, it's going to be kind of boring. So, I'm going to add some green onion and chili pepper to it. So, I'm just going to slice it in even thicknesses. It doesn't really matter how thick you slice it, as long as the pieces are consistent. So it's like when you saute something, you want all your vegetables, like carrots and celery, onion, kind of diced up about the same size, or else it won't cook evenly. So, so sometimes if I'm feeling very anal, I might shave it off a little bit so I can layer it in the jar, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to cut it in quarters so I can just throw it in the jar. And I'm going to add, I want to layer it, so I'm going to cut up some onions. And see, I'm just using what I have. I bought a bunch of green onions for my Korean dinner and I had a bunch left over. So I'm just going to use everything up. Okay, so I'm going to throw that in the jar. And then a client brought me some peppers this morning. So I'm going to slightly thin those up, cut those, thinly slice them. And I'm going to keep the seeds in. And I'm going to throw some of that in there. And then I'm going to add more daikon. So daikon is pretty soft, 
So it's not going to take that many days to ferment. So when you're fermenting vegetables, the harder the vegetable, the longer it's going to take to ferment. The softer the vegetable, the shorter it's going to take. So I'm going to add some more onions now. This is so loosey goosey. I mean, you, I don't even really have recipes for this stuff because I usually just wing it. But I do have like for the salsa, um, my salsa turned out great. And then I made some more a couple of days, about a week later, because I still had some more tomatoes. So my green tomatoes started to turn red. So what happens when they ripen is more sugar is in the tomatoes and you need more salt, but I didn't adjust the salt and I kind of forgot about them on the counter. So when I finally opened the tops, there was this white fuzz on the top, but not to worry. Um, I just scraped off the fuzz. It's not mold, it's actually yeast overgrowth and between it being warm and um, having the redder tomatoes, it just was the breeding ground for the yeast, but it's, it's not harmful. I've been eating the salsa from that jar and I'm living to tell about it. So there you have it. Okay. So I made a brine with, it's just sea salt, and I'm using this um, real salt from Utah, Redmond's. And I use a heaping teaspoon to a cup of water is what I typically use. I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. And um, if your salt doesn't dissolve, it's actually been sitting on the counter for a couple days, but because there's a lot of minerals in the salt, it doesn't completely dissolve. So I'm gonna stir it up a little bit just so it's evenly distributed. And then I'm going to pour it over my vegetables. I made two cups. You wanna cover it. You wanna leave about an inch of head space. So I kind of put too many in here. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw some more peppers in here. I have a little tiny red one here. So the redder your peppers, the hotter. So the other one is a green version of the same pepper. You could even put like peppercorns if you want, a couple of peppercorns in there. You could use garlic. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more onion. Like I said, there's no magic. So these are staying down, they're not really floating. And for years, I never used anything to keep the stuff down, but I did get these fancy weights, glass weights a few years ago. And I always forget to use them. So since I have them, I'm gonna use them. If I can get them out. So they're these glass weights, they have something you can grab on them on the top. And I'm just gonna rinse it just for good measure. And then you can just set it on the top and then it keeps all of your vegetables under the liquid, which is the ideal thing. Sometimes if they stick up above the liquid, they'll dry out or it's just not good. It's not terrible, but it's not good either. Okay, so I also I'm gonna use my nipple lids, but if you don't have these fancy nipple lids that lets a teeny bit of air out while they're, um, your vegetables are fermenting, you can just use the regular lid for that goes on the mason jar, or sometimes I use these plastic lids, which you can also buy um, for your mason jars. So uh, a lot of the stuff I keep, I get at Walmart, like you can get an eight pack of these lids, super cheap at Walmart. Um, the jars are probably cheapest at Walmart. Um, this other fancy stuff I've just kind of found here and there, or I've bought it on the internet. 
and I'm going to do this and that is it and because I have the nipple lid I don't even have to like check it every couple of days and um, let off the gas so you'll find that after a few days you'll start seeing little bubbles accumulate around your vegetables and that's a good thing that's a sign that things are actually happening um, if you do get a little white stuff on the top that means you didn't have enough salt for the amount of or the type of vegetable you have but like it really only matters like tomatoes pickle or cucumbers um, beets need extra salt and carrots if I do shredded carrots I put extra salt in that so I'm just gonna set this on the counter and throw a towel over it and let that sit I'll probably test it in maybe four days and if it's got the right amount of tang and crunch I'll stick it in the refrigerator if it needs a little bit more softening then I'll just keep it out on the counter for a little bit more so um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about some basic tools that are nice to have not necessarily not necessary but nice um, this is a jar that I had gotten years ago and so this one is fancier I'll use this maybe for like some sauerkraut and then you put water in here you stick this in here and then you don't have to also burp your jar so that's a nice jar but it was expensive I want to say I paid like $30 it's kind of ridiculous because the only thing that's special about it is it has a hole on the top and this little thing which I don't know what you call it um, a kraut pounder is nice to have and this was super hard to find and I finally found one when a out ace hardware in Santa Maria was going out of business and they happened to have this hanging out on the counter so this is good for pressing down things like um, shredded cabbage and these are also some fancy lids that I picked up that you have a waterless airlock valve actually I don't even know if I maybe I've used these once the nipple ones are cheaper and you don't have to like oh it has a thing when you set the date but I, don't know, I forget about them but that's that and then these um, weights are kind of nice to have um, this collar which is used for also used for canning so if you're shredding a bunch of vegetables and packing them in jars then this comes in really handy and what else really the basics are a sharp knife um, and mason jars and salt and purified water and you want to make sure the water is purified because if you're using tap water with chlorine the chlorine will kill the natural bacteria on the vegetables and it will prevent the vegetables from um, actually fermenting so it'll it'll totally kill your ferment okay I think that's about it for today or for now I, I want to do a video and I think I might even do it today on what do you do to substitute for noodles when you're trying to eat low carb and lose weight so I have all the stuff I need. I just need to clear everything out and start all over. So um, again, my name is Michelle Sala. I'm an integrative health coach. I help people get to the root cause of their health issues. So if you're frustrated with dealing with doctors, you don't feel well, um, your hair's falling out, you have hot flashes, you have weight loss resistance, I uh, can help my clients figure out what's going on. I am trained as a true cellular detox practitioner and I love to share my knowledge and help people feel better because you can feel fabulous at any age. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Have a great day.